In this video, we will explore how to use the wound healing recipe. We will look at how to use the group preview function to optimize parameter settings and how charts can help you monitor your results in real time. We will also look at some of the advanced measurements added to this recipe. The image wound heal demo one tiff is loaded into the viewer and the wound healing recipe is loaded into the recipe console. A quick review of the image and we see that we have a typical vertical scratch wound that is fully healed by the end of the acquisition series. First, let's make sure our calibration is correct. The calibration is listed in the bottom left-hand corner of the SV cell window. To adjust it, click on the icon beside the numbers to open the window. For this image, the calibration should be 0.9 micrometers per pixel and a time calibration of 0.25 hours per frame. We turn on the detection group preview by clicking on the little magnifying glass next to the detection heading. This creates a preview in the main viewer of only the first section of the recipe. Click on the three different preset buttons for detection to see which gives the best result. Here we are only looking at detection. In the next step of the recipe, we will use a size filter to remove the small intercellular regions that are not part of the wound. We see that all three give a decent detection on frame one. Let's go with low, as that is the least amount of detection outside the wound area. Turn on the preview for the filtering group and try the three different preset buttons. Here, we see that there is no difference on frame one. If we go to frame 250, we see that the small wound region is filtered away if we use any value other than the small setting. In the bottom right-hand corner of the recipe console are the apply buttons. Select Apply from Beginning. A small red bar appears above each frame as it is processed. When the recipe is done processing the image, the words Processing Complete appear below the recipe console. Let's play back the image to look at the results. They are excellent. If we open the chart function and select Percent Area, we can see the increase in cell area as the wound is healed. On the spreadsheet, we have calculated the percent area of the region covered by cells, as well as how fast that is changing and an estimate of the speed of the wound edge. We use the center point approximation, or CPA, to estimate the wound edge speed. These last two measurements are advanced measurements and can be found under the Advanced Measurements tab in the Measurements tool. Click on the ruler and go to the Advanced tab to have a look at these measurements. Load the image Wound Heal Demo 2 TIFF into the viewer. Turn on the Detection Group Preview and try the preset buttons. Medium is a good value for detection, but there is not a good filtering value. Small gives an extraneous detection on the first frame. If I switch to the medium value, then the wound disappears too early on frame 38. Let's look at the advanced parameters and see if we can fix this. Click on the icon in the upper right corner of the recipe console to expand the recipe. We see that each preset button was actually changing multiple parameters. When filtering changes from small to medium, our minimum size goes from 1000 square microns to 10,000 square microns. Go to the first frame and open the annotations tool. Then select the region tool and draw a region around the false detection on frame one. I get an area of about 1500 square microns. If we set the min size to 1800 square microns, then we will not see this detection. Now when we apply the recipe, we detect the wound as it closes all the way to frame 51, instead of it ending on frame 39, with the medium setting. With SV cell, we can get the best of both worlds. An alternative to adjusting the size filter is to apply one setting for the first part of the image, and another setting for the second part. Let's change the subset filtering back to medium and apply the recipe from the beginning, but pause on frame 35. Now I can change the subset filtering to small and click continue. With SV Cell's unique incremental apply, we are able to apply different parameter settings to different portions of the image. Now we can play back the image and see that we have a wound detection all the way through frame 62. If we go to the tools menu and open the action history, 
we can see we have a record of all the actions, so whenever we open this image, we know exactly how it was analyzed. We were able to get a good result on the first image simply by using the preset values. In the second image, we adjusted one of the advanced parameters. Let's take a moment to go over each of the advanced parameters in detail. Click on the detection preview. This brings up a preview image and a preview mask. Turn off the preview mask by clicking on the mask tab. We are looking at the image from the first half of the recipe, what we call the confidence image. Set all the parameters to zero so we can see the effect as we make changes. First, change the background removal from a low value of 10 to a high value of 90 and see the difference. At 10, we have wiped out the image. I don't see anything, even if I play with the LUT. At 90, it is overexposed. We are looking for a value that will give good contrast between the wound region and the surrounding cells. Somewhere between 50 and 70 looks good. Notice how the intensity of the image changes with the background removal. This will affect the next parameter, the contrast threshold. Now turn the mask back on and adjust the contrast threshold. Pixels with intensities greater than this number will be included in the mask. If I go to 30, I detect too much. And if I go up to 165, I don't detect anything. A value of 60 does a pretty good job. Fill holes is the next parameter, and it does exactly what it says. Any hole smaller than this number will get filled in. If we set it at 2, we can see the dark regions in the wound area are not detected. Raise that value up higher, and they are included in the detection. I'm going to put it to 1000. Smoothing rounds the edges. This can fill in holes and join regions. On this frame, we don't see much of a difference. Go to frame 35 change the smoothing factor from 1 to 10, and you will see it increases the detection. I will leave it at 2. Turn on the subset filtering preview. Now we are looking at the results from the entire recipe. We have introduced a minimum object size. When it is at 0, we see that there are many small regions outside the wound area that are included. We can use the annotations tool to determine the size of these regions and then set our min object size accordingly. Click on the Annotation tab below the image and select the Freehand Region tool. Draw regions around some of the smaller detected areas. Each time you complete a region, its area and location are recorded. I got areas around 300 square microns, so I'm going to set the value at 1000. The top part of the recipe controls input and output. Under Wound Region, I will select Create Mask. Now when we run the recipe, it will create a new mask so we can compare our results. Both masks are currently displayed, so we can see where the two masks differ. That concludes this video on wound healing. We solved one image using the presets and then used the advanced parameter settings and incremental apply to improve our results on the second. We also looked at the action history and learned how to apply the recipe a second time with a new mask. We also explored each of the advanced parameters individually. Thank you for your attention.